Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is KCAL 9 News at 9. After more than a year of speculation, L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti says he's not jumping into the 2020 presidential race. Dire warnings as record-breaking cold settles in on the Midwest. Tonight, Chicago is colder than Antarctica. And new details and reaction to a brutal attack on actor Jesse Smollett of the TV series Empire. Hello everyone, I'm Juan Fernandez. Sharon Tay is off tonight. Well, a big announcement from L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti. He's not leaving City Hall to make a run for the White House. KCAL 9 political reporter Dave Bryan has more now on the mayor's decision to not become a presidential candidate. Dave. Yeah, and Juan, uh, j up to just a few weeks ago, it looked like a sure thing yeah. he would be running for president. Now to the life-threatening weather conditions across the Midwest. Record-breaking low temperatures prompting state of emergencies to be declared. Correspondent Don Daler is in Chicago, where it's a frigid 49 below. Well, luckily, we don't have to worry about a deep freeze here, but we do have rain headed our way. Yeah. Meteorologist Evelyn Taft is here <laughs> now with a look at the three storms. Yes. Now heading our way. Three storms. Yep. A drug raid almost turned deadly for Houston police. Four officers were shot. Both suspects were killed. Melissa Correa has the latest on the officers and the events leading up to the deadly shootout. And that was Melissa Correa reporting. Meantime, tonight, a TV star is recovering from a real-life drama. Police say he may have been the victim of a hate crime. Empire star Jesse Smollett says he was beaten in Chicago overnight, and police say it may not have been a random attack. Smollett is openly gay. Police are looking into whether he was targeted because of that. Two men reportedly yelled racial and homophobic slurs while they beat him. They also reportedly put a noose around his neck and poured bleach on him. The brutal attack is leaving Smollett's fellow entertainers at a loss for words. It's so sad it makes you sick. Like, this makes me so sick. A shocking, horrible Disgusting. reminder that any of us can be a victim of this kind of hate. It's barbaric. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, in this day and age, come on, it's got to stop. Smollett was treated and released from the hospital. Chicago police are canvassing nearby businesses in hopes of finding security video to help identify the attackers. Well, the measles outbreak that prompted a health emergency in Washington state is now spreading. At least 36 cases have been confirmed in Clark County near Portland and has now spread to Hawaii. Most of the patients are children. Public health officials say this underscores the importance of vaccinations. But Jamie Yukas found out some parents say they don't do it. A mystery at the pump that's costing drivers 20 cents a gallon. And it's not a tax, and now California lawmakers want to know what the surcharge is. The story's coming up. Plus, America's top intelligence officials appear to contradict President Trump today, the latest from Capitol Hill. Plus, sports director Jim Hill has a preview of Super Bowl 53 from Atlanta when we come back. Super Bowl 53 between the Rams and Patriots is now less than five days away. Sports director Jim Hill is in Atlanta with the Rams and has more on how the team is preparing for the big game. The uh, so-called French Spider-Man is at it again. Find out where his, he scaled his latest skyscraper. And new video of a dramatic rescue on ice. See how police officers saved a man and his dog. Wow, some intense moments there. Newly released body cam video showing a man being rescued from Icy Lake, Michigan. Chicago police officers pulled him and his dog out of the frigid water on Sunday. The duo was taking a stroll when they both fell in. Tonight, both the man and his dog, named Pika and seen in this picture, are doing just fine. The climber, known as the French Spider-Man, apparently needed another challenge, so he scaled this 47-story tower in Manila. 56-year-old Alan Robert added this building to his growing collection of accomplishments, including the Willis Tower in Chicago, the Eiffel Tower, the Sydney Opera House, and the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Robert also added to his rap sheet, he was arrested moments after he climbed down. Well, the Rams brought in some big names this offseason to help them reach the Super Bowl. But was there ever any danger of those personalities clashing in the, cl in the locker room? Those details are coming up next in sports. Live from the Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, this is KCAL 9 News at 9. 
Welcome back, everybody. I'm Juan Fernandez. Sharon Tay is off tonight. The heads of the U.S. intelligence agencies went before Congress today. They had a different take on President Trump's positions on ISIS, Iran, and North Korea. They also raised new questions and warnings on Russia and China. Correspondent Nancy Cordes has details. Some blowback today on sweeping U.S. sanctions against Venezuela. Russia says it will undermine confidence in financial markets, while China says it will only complicate things. The Trump administration announced sanctions against Venezuela's state-owned oil firm yesterday. It's a move to push control of Venezuela's oil wealth to forces who oppose socialist president Nicolas Maduro. He's locked in a power struggle with opposition leader Juan Guaido, who named himself interim president and was recognized as leader by President Trump. Venezuelan army defectors are calling on the Trump administration to arm them in what they call their quest for freedom. Opposition leader Guaido is calling on followers to pressure soldiers they know into revolting against the Maduro regime. The defectors are also asking Brazil, Colombia and Peru for help. Well, a quick court appearance this morning for President Trump's associate, Roger Stone. Protesters waved signs and a Russian flag as Stone arrived in court. His attorneys entered a not guilty plea for him at the arraignment in Washington, D.C. Stone is charged with seven counts of obstruction, lying to Congress and witness tampering. The charges are part of special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. Well, the former Dallas police officer charged in the shooting death of her neighbor went before a judge today. Amber Geiger walked in with her attorneys this morning. She's accused of killing 26-year-old Botham Jean in his apartment after she came home from her shift. She claims she mistook Jean for an intruder. Today, prosecutors asked for Geiger's police training records. Well, the FBI has finished its investigation into the Las Vegas massacre, but agents aren't unable to answer this one remaining question. Why did he do it? After nearly 16 months of investigating, the FBI says we may never know why Stephen Paddock did what he did, why he rented a room at the Mandalay Bay Resort and opened fire from that room, gunning down people at the Route 91 Country Music Festival next door. Paddock killed himself and 58 people, mostly Southern Californians, and wounded nearly 900 more. The mother of a U.S. Navy veteran is urging Iran to free her son. 47-year-old Michael White has been held for more than six months in that country. Correspondent Roxana Saberi has more. For the second time in less than 20 years, PG&E has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Surprisingly, the move boosted the company's stock, which closed at nearly $14 a share. As Melissa Kane shows us, there's outrage from consumer groups about the bankruptcy filing. Now, as Melissa Kane reporting, PG&E is facing no immediate cash flow problems. Its decision to file for bankruptcy is driven its estimate of pending legal issues linked to recent wildfires. We are counting down to Super Bowl 53. More than 100 million Americans are expected to watch the big game on Sunday, and some of them will call in sick on Monday. Those post-Super Bowl sick calls will cost American companies more than $2.5 billion, and work time spent wasted discussing the game equals $1.7 billion in lost productivity. That's some expensive water cooler talk, right? And speaking of Super Bowl costs, SeatGeek says the average ticket price for the big game is now more than $5,200, with the cheapest seats selling for $3,700. SeatGeek says 30% of ticket buyers on its site are from Boston, 11% from New York, and 9% from L.A. A factory in Ohio is gearing up for Super Bowl 53. Every football used in every NFL game and every Super Bowl is made at the Wilson Sporting Goods Factory near Toledo. Dozens of people work at the plant and they make every ball by hand. No automation here, imagine that. They say the process is detail-oriented, it's deliberate and precise. The Wilson Factory opened in 1955 and produces more than 700,000 foot bulbs a year. You learn something new every day. And remember, the only place you can watch Super Bowl 53 is over on our sister station, CBS 2, on Sunday. They should just make Monday a national holiday. Right? Wouldn't it be nice? Can if you believe all that money? People are being productive anyways, you know? But then Tuesday would be unproductive. Indeed. So Because then you'd be talking about the game on Tuesday right. instead of Monday because you stayed home. That's exactly right. Indeed.
We're, we're going to have some rain. It's so Ooh. cold across the United States. Big time. There's My a lot goodness. going on. I mean, mm -hmm. negative 50 degrees for some of us with the wind chill factored wow. in there. Here at home, about 90 degrees warmer than that. Ahead on KCAL 9 News at 10 is the LAUSD teacher deal in jeopardy. The school board says yes, there's not enough money. A government shutdown, baby boom, will explain how it affected one group of California SEALs. And making parking at the airport a whole lot easier, a robot valets your car and even tracks your flight to deliver it back when you arrive home. But now at 9, the battle over Brexit heated up again in the British Parliament. Lawmakers are struggling to agree on the best way to leave the European Union. Correspondent Gwen Baumgartner has the latest from London. Back here, we pay some of the highest gas prices in the country, and it turns out there's a hidden surcharge. An advisory committee found the mysterious charge, and now lawmakers are trying to get to the bottom of it. Correspondent Emily Turner has details. Thanks so much for watching KCAL 9 News at 9. KCAL 9 News at 10 starts right now. Developing news right now on KCAL 9 News at 10.